on this week's journey around Poland, I welcome you to not one, but several sites. We went to the area around a city called Tomaszow Mazowiecki. And here we saw a World War II bunker, which um, was pretty cool. Uh, we went to a grotto, which uh, used to be a sand mine with uh, some interesting sights and something a little bit different uh, from the norm. And we went to a ethnographic museum, which taught us a little bit about the history of Poland, culture, crafts, that sort of thing. And we hit a few more sites as well, including a Skansen, which is like an outdoor museum, which uh, again told us a little bit about the history of the area. And we ended up in this beautiful nature reserve called the Blue Spring Reserve. So I hope you enjoy this video. It gives you some other random things to see around Poland that you may not see in the normal tourist guides. So stay tuned. Dzień dobry. Welcome to a Brit in Poland. This channel has a number of missions. The main one, to create a video for every place on this list. Though I could use your help. The help could be in a number of forms. You could like my video, you could subscribe to my channel, you could follow me on Facebook or Instagram, or you could donate to my Patronite account. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the video. As always, thank you very much to Ricky and Wojciech, who are slightly set helping to fund my, my journey. So this time we went a little bit sort of southwest of Warsaw, about 100 kilometers away um, into the woods for Voidership. We took cars this time because we were going to quite a few different sites and in order to see them all in the same day, we, yeah, needed to drive. It perhaps wasn't the best weather to start the day, but we weren't deterred. Luckily, most of the things we were seeing were indoors anyway. But the weather cleared up, and our first sight was this bunker in Kunevka. And this bunker is pretty impressive and pretty well hidden. As you can sort of see, it's in the middle of the forest, so it's a bit out of the way. It was kind of connected by train. And already you have this kind of fear, this feeling of like foreboding uh, going into the place. Of course, now it's just a big, you know, tourist attraction. But during World War II, this was a pretty heavily used military site. So the bunker you see now is one of three main command centers for Hitler on the Eastern Front. And actually... The building itself is about 380 meters long. You know, it's a pretty extensive structure. In fact, it was so long um, that they were even storing trains. Well, at least a train in here as well, uh, as well as a lot of artillery. So it was quite the supply depot, you could say, for the area and quite an intimidating sight, I have to say. So you go inside and you have this long, long tunnel. It was about 19 Zloty or something. You needed to bring cash uh, for this place. So one thing to note about Poland is occasionally you will encounter places that are not card friendly. So if you're going on these random excursions, cash is a good idea. You have the museum piece to it. So you have lots of exhibits of pretty much military equipment, ranging from weapons to helmets to radio equipment uh, to vehicles uh, that were used. So if you're a history buff, this is a must-see place because you are going to see a lot. And yeah, like it takes a fair while to walk through the bunker, 
uh, given the size and given the amount there is to read and see. Uh, here's an example of one of the trains that you would have seen coming out, see the large artillery piece on the top, so pretty intimidating. There were these little side tunnels which were a bit flooded, um, but nonetheless, uh, you know, pretty creepy. And you actually have bats uh, living in this tunnel as well. But yeah, certainly I felt a little bit like there just was this weird, eerie thing. And I kept seeing, like as you see on the screen now, these little globules of light on the lens. And if you watch enough kind of ghost stories, that can be an indication of a haunting. But I didn't hear about any ghost stories when I was there. Though you have to admit, it does seem a little bit creepy and eerie. You would not want to be here at night, for sure. Now, there is actually a kind of secret tunnel leading from this to one of the many complexes that you see around it. It's about 80 metres, but it's only open in the summer. So, uh, sadly, we didn't get to see it. But what you have dotted around this bunker are a whole series of technical bunkers. And these were containing generators, boiler rooms, ventilators, uh, water pumps. You know, they, they were, it was all part of a big complex to basically, you know, keep everything running. And you can only imagine the amount of destruction that came from this place spewing forth over the country of Poland. It was established in 1940, and I believe construction finished around 1941. And there was a secret Nazi code name called Anlage Mitte, and uh, the construction work was carried out by only German and Italian workers to keep it extra secret. So, like Treblinka, another kind of hidden German atrocity. So we drive to our next site, and this was probably one of my, uh, my favorite ones because I'm a big fan of nature, and whenever I get to see any kind of natural wonders, even if slightly artificial, um, I enjoy it. So we went to Nagorzhitsky uh, Grotto, and here in the gift shop, you can see a lot of glass, uh, including a lot of gr glass snails, which... Um, was a bit surprising and there's a reason why they're selling so much glass in this uh this gift shop which we will come on to as the video progresses here you have the flintstone car or the flintmobile or whatever it was called um which is a great place for selfies inside the grotto you basically are in count you have a you have to go by tour guide and tours go every half an hour I think it was about 20 zloty or so to get in. The tour guide spoke in English uh, brilliantly, and he was very, very enthusiastic, so I do recommend this. Um, and he was telling all these stories about, the, about the, uh, the, the, what you see here, which was a mine, uh, more specifically a sand mine, uh, because this is quite a unique geological thing. You have these sort of sandstone, deep sandstone areas, uh, but it's very, very soft sandstone, so you can actually dig it out with your hands if you uh, really put some effort in. And this site was operational from uh, the end of the 18th century up until about kind of the, uh, the 20th century or so. And what they were digging here was sand, which was used a lot for farming and whatever in the local area. But it's more famous because of the 80% uh, transparent quartz within the sand. So this sand is actually incredibly useful for glassworks and was exported around a lot of Europe, even as far as Japan. So a lot of the glassworks of this period uh, came from here. Uh, this is an emergency exit just in case because... Uh, it's perhaps not the most stable area. It's nice and stable for tourists now, but there were a few tunnel collapses uh, for its history. What, at least one person died. And here is a pretty cool story. Um, you've got the, uh, the devil from 
Nagorzhitsky, um, and here a miner was working one day, and a man dressed in a checked frock coat and red tights with a black hat appeared, surrounded by bats. He offered him money in terms of a week's worth of money for one day's worth of work, but that day of work had to be a Sunday, which, if you're even vaguely religious, is uh, the day you're not supposed to work. Um, and so, realising who it was, the miner ran away. So here you have a little bit of a, a glass works within the tunnel to kind of indicate uh, what they were doing uh, with some of the sand, so it's pretty cool. And I have to admit, like, this was just fun. Like, it, it was really cool. The temperature within the, uh, the cave is always between 7 and 10 degrees, no matter the temperature outside. And if that temperature shifts then all of this sand is going to collapse. It's kind of a very unique geological state. So we moved on to the next site. And this is where we go into the city of uh, Tomashov, Mazovitsky itself. And this is actually the fourth largest city in the, uh, the Woods Vavoidership, uh, formed in 1788 and is now famous for having an all-year-round speed skating track. And in awesome, it hosts the Love Polish Jazz Festival. And this city was traditionally a mining town, uh, basically due to a local supply of iron ore. And here we're going through the uh, Ethnographic Museum. So you can see some of like the techniques that they use to uh, decorate eggs for Easter, for example. Um, but to tell you a little bit about the history, while well, we're going through a kind of history museum, uh, this town was actually the home of a large resistance movement uh, during World War I, as of course it was occupied by the, uh, the, German, the Imperial German regime at the time. Going into World War II, there was uh, the famous Battle of Tomashov Mazovitsky, and this was fought on the 6th of September, 1939. And during the war, uh, the populace was, well, basically largely taken to labor camps through uh, a lot of kind of mass rounding up of Polish civilians, uh, while the, the Polish Jews were sent to concentration camps. And during the war, there were many atrocities committed as the town was looted and burned by the German forces. Now, we didn't really get the opportunity to explore much of the town. We kind of drove through parts, you know, and it's kind of a, looks like a quiet, you know, very peaceful area. You know, people seem to be pretty friendly and, yeah, it was quite, quite picturesque in places, you know, but it seemed to, to me to be, you know, very residential. We didn't really see a lot of activities, so I don't know what there is in terms of things to do other than the museum we visited. But as this video shows, there's a lot of stuff nearby. So we went to this uh, Skansen Jeki Pelitsi, and this is basically a large outdoor museum, and it is the first in Poland to be based around the activities that occur like near water. So yeah, it's dedicated to, to the, the nearby river. And one of the, there are lots of little exhibits here, little guard houses. Uh, there's a Saras toilet. I think this was, yeah, very bizarre, but there you go. Um, and you have a big exhibit towards water mills because, well, sorry, water flower mills. Uh, so if you ever wanted to know about water milling in the area, this is the place to go. I believe it has Poland's largest collection of millstones. And we found quite a lot of uh, kind of coffee grinders and things upstairs as well. Uh, this is the, the Cross of Afghanistan, which um, is pretty cool, I have to say. A uh, bit of machinery for you. But yeah, so this, this uh, site, again wasn't too expensive, about 20 zloty or so to go around. And yeah, just offered up a few unique things. You have a few army armed vehicles here. Oh, and by the way, a lot of the kind of debris and stuff you find was actually, you know, taken out of the river. 
uh, where it had been lying for many, many years since the war. And here you have a little trench and a little bunker, so I'm assuming this is more uh, World War I style. You had quite a lot of boats, which makes sense given that the, uh, the place is based around the river. And yeah, some sculpture, and there was a bit of a focus on the, uh, the local railway as well. So this was like a, kind of a conductor's station. And across the way is my, one of my favorite parts, which is the Blue Springs Reserve, or Nyebieski Zhwudwa. Uh, and this was a very beautiful little area to walk through. Um, it's actually, it was established in 1961 as a nature reserve, and it covers a total of like 29 hectares. So it's a, you know, fairly extensive site. So we didn't see everything, but we certainly saw enough uh, to be relaxed and impressed. And you have about 75 different species of birds. You know, we saw swans, there are uh, kingfishers. But what you're seeing now is the main draw of the place. So this is known as like one of the freshest spring water areas in Poland with the clearest water you will see. And the park is named because of its like turquoise to emerald color which you're, you're seeing now, which is a bit of an optical illusion uh, from the light that, that uh, you know, shines down. And the water was said to have kind of medicinal properties. Much to the horror of the group I was with, I did take a bit of a sip. Um, I wasn't ill afterwards, despite their protestations that they perhaps thought I should walk back in case of accidents in the car. Um... But yeah, this was an absolutely lovely little diversion to end the day. But we couldn't quite finish there uh, because we decided we were going to stop for a bite to eat. There, I think there were two main restaurants um, in the city, so we stopped for some Baltic food. Uh, lovely, lovely uh, meal. Come on. And I hope you enjoyed. Dosa I believe this is for two, right? <laughs> Where are we? We are big kids. <laughs>